So Solana's up around 250% over the last year so far, and personally I don't see this slowing down anytime soon with some massive growth still to come, we could see Solana top out on its previous all time highs. But if we think about it, where do we realistically make the most money in cryptocurrency? It's not in the large caps, it is in the smaller cap newer projects with the potential to give us the best returns. So even though I believe that Solana will do well, maybe we should be looking at the smaller projects that have been building on the Solana blockchain. So one thing we can confidently say is that the chart trend seen on Solana seems to be very similar to those that are built on Solana. And I've tried to show it with two chart comparisons here. So we can see GMT, which belongs to the Stefan project, and we can compare this to the Solana chart, which is on the top one here. So we can see if we follow the trend, they both have this little green wick is actually hidden by the price. I'm sorry about that. But as you can see, as it comes down, it pretty much mimics exactly. Like it looks like exactly the same chart pretty much. Even it comes down here and then we have the big drop here. So this could be a really interesting trend that we could try and look into and see if this applies across other projects that are built on Solana. So today we're going to talk about three Solana projects that I feel are definitely worth paying attention to over the next few months. And I'd also like to talk about one at the end, which I could use some of the more expert opinion on to see what they think. So why is Solana going to see good growth in the future? Well, to put it quite simply, Solana did lose 96% of its value from November 21 to November 22 due to the bear market and the collapse of FTX. And one of FTX's biggest investments was Solana. So this was dragged down with it also. Now I've done a lot of research into Solana lately and I did allocate a portion of my portfolio to this in 2022. When things were dying back, we we're on a bit of a pullback, but I hadn't actually researched it properly. I just knew that people had been buying and that it was currently pretty much on a sale. So it was at its all time high of, I think it was around $200 if I remember. And I bought it when it was down at about $50. Obviously it went way below this, but to me it was a good buy at the time. So fun fact, DeFi Llama is also built on Solana. So we've got a total value locked of 1.3 billion. And believe it or not, when I started writing out the facts for this video, which was like 12 hours ago, it was actually sitting at 1.2. So it has already increased. And this ranks them as the fifth biggest in regards to chains with the low. So we're also starting to see Solana take more of the NFT market share all the time. And in the last bull market, at the end of it, what we saw was Ethereum absolutely exploding because of all of the transactions and everything that was going on in OpenSea and its own Ethereum marketplace with the NFTs. So you can see that I've got this out of this little report here. So Solana now represents 18% of the total NFT trading volumes, which is insane. And the number of active Ethereum NFT users had declined by 73%, and Solana's active NFT users increased by over 80%. So you can see they're kind of switching around. There's obviously still a long way to go before Solana would overtake Ethereum on it because Ethereum has such a large market share but it definitely seems to be going in the right direction for Solana. And Solana have also launched Solana Pay, which is now available to millions of businesses as an approved app integration with Shopify. And I believe Shopify owns, when I last looked, it was around about 28% of the market share for e-commerce in the USA, which is absolutely huge given that there's 279 e-commerce platforms that are available for this. So 28% is a really large portion of it, which is obviously great for Solana. And Visa has also announced plans to increase its cross-border money movement. And as part of the plans for that, it's incorporating Solana for its USDC stablecoin settlements. So if you can't tell, I am a huge fan of Solana. So I could be fairly biased in my opinions of it, but on a previous video, I have also gone over the negatives. So I do try and be as balanced as possible. But I do believe in my opinion that with the progress and the building that Solana has done since the previous bull run, there's a reasonable chance it could easily aim for a new all-time high this time around. And I would personally be looking for around a 20 to 30x on Solana in like a super bullish scenario. But in a realistic scenario, we are going to aim still just for the 10x. Now, by default, technically, if I have this much belief in Solana, it would only make sense that the smaller market caps built on the Solana blockchain could follow suit on this. And I already showed the chart char that demonstrated this pretty well with the GMT and Solana. So I am going to try and not get myself and everyone else too lost in my explanations of all the different projects because I know I get carried away with this. But anyway, the first one that I am going to talk about today is one that I think is quite well known and this is Solend. Now Solend is the autonomous interest rate machine for lending on Solana. So 
Simply put, users can borrow and lend assets over the Solana network. So you don't only earn interest on Solana, but also on 60 different assets over 20 different pools. So for the people out there who are into yield farming, this could definitely be an interesting one for you. So on the protocol, an algorithm decides interest rates and collaterals, which is letting users earn interest and leverage crypto assets on the platform for long or short periods. So the native token for Solana is SLND, and this provides exposure to Solana's DeFi market and it's currently used as the reward for the liquidity mining program. So Solend currently has 134 million in the total value locked and we can see on this chart here that it actually explains because there is like a big drop off that you can see but it does show FTX had collapsed and a sol whale was liquidated so obviously that's going to wipe out a fair chunk of it as a whale. Now Solend currently has a market cap of 78 million, it's 77 and a half. We would class this as a micro cap and we know that the micro caps have a chance of giving us the best gains. Now it also has a maximum supply of 100 million so around 36% of it is currently in the circulating supply. It does mean there's still a chance for price dilution on this. So that would be one to watch. We ideally want to see the circulating supply as over 80% for the kind of confirmation that there won't be any price dilution or a reduced chance of it anyway. But for Slend, I do think this is just the beginning. The project has a great team with an amazing vision. So it would definitely be one on my list to keep an eye on. And I believe they have just announced an airdrop for this if that is something that anybody is interested in. So next up is another one that is new to me. And this is Marnade, which is currently sat, it's got a market cap of pretty much $59 million, it's 58.8. And this is a decentralized autonomous organization or a DAO, and it has a staking protocol built on Solana. So users of Marinade can stake natively or liquid stake to a pool of 100 plus high performing validators. And these validators are selected using a formula which is optimized for performance and decentralization. So if we check out the website on Marinade, we can see here that they are currently offering just a little smidgen over 8% APY and they do currently have over 932.53. So again, this was at 915 when I started writing this. So it's now at $932 million in their TVL and they do have over 107,000 user, user accounts on Marinade. So this all looks super positive. So if you remember way back at the start of the video, I mentioned about some of the protocols built on Solana following very similar chart, chart patterns. So if we take a look at this, one day I will work out how I can just split the screen so I can show them side by side normally, but the screenshots will have to do for just now. So the charts are literally so similar and I'd snipped out the part that told us which coins were which obviously I added these little bits on but we can tell obviously from the price indicators which one is which but they do pretty much mimic each other again you can see this dip here in Solana dip here on Marinade and again we come down here we have this little dip down here matches it's crazy how much they just seem to if one moves the other one moves pretty much the exact same way obviously this would look way better if we had a green week on the charts but the crypto market is showing me absolutely no mercy on this one but it still does give you the visualization for it. Now, just to be completely candid, I do not know for certain and nobody can know that the chart mimicking will be a persistent thing on this, but I think it is very, very interesting to look into because they're literally identical. Also, I am still personally very skeptical about staking currently after getting after my whole greed thing got the better of me with Celsius, but now that I've been looking into and learning more, this is something that may pique my interest for my Solana holding as I do know that this is going to be one of my longer term plays. So if I do decide to dip my toes into staking, I will keep you updated on it. So the third one that I want to talk about is Orca. Now Orca is a decentralized exchange or a DEX and its big positive is that it is very user friendly and very beginner friendly. So I don't know about you guys, but when I first went on to an exchange, they can be very confusing and quite overwhelming if you are unfamiliar with them. So Orca currently has a TVL of $163.45 million and the Orca token is what powers the entire DEX. Now, one of the good things about Orca is that they actually have a fair price indicator, which is a really good tool for those who are new and also for the experienced people as well. And they have a huge focus on security as well. So we know that Solana is already very security and safety focused. Orca have added to this by adding 2FA and multi-sig wallets. Now we'll take a little look at the chart. So as we can see today, it is on a lovely little green day. 
but once again it has followed the trend of the general market as a whole and has been on a red now orca does have a market cap of 246 million dollars and there's still a lot of room for this to grow and do exceptionally well on it orca also offers rewards in the forms of yield farming and liquidity pooling if you are again willing to lock up some of the token you can benefit in terms of the rewards but i don't really want to go down into that route too much so these are the three solana blockchain projects that i see real potential with and as i said when you see sol trending upwards take a peek at the charts for these guys because whilst i've only been able to see that they tend to follow the little dips of solana it would be interesting to see if we can also follow the upwards trends of it now you may have noticed that i mentioned at the start of the video gmt so i have been doing some research into gmt and the step in app and um project sorry because i had used an app that was very similar i think it was called sweat or something when you were pretty much earning rewards for walking right this was years ago that i had used it but anyway so i'd spent about two hours looking into step in and i was super excited for it and to discuss it and what i initially thought was just a regular dip from the bull market i realized i think the project has maybe actually died off a little bit so i went through a few different video reviews from people who had used it and i was trying to find out things online about it but i couldn't really find out any kind of up-to-date information all i knew was that the chart was very dead and wasn't doing very much and the more as i looked into this the more i realized that it just didn't feel like this was a good project to bring to people because even if I love the idea behind the project it doesn't mean that it's a good investment and I think it's important to be transparent about that. So I'll tell you a little bit about it anyway because I would be interested to get some other people's feedback on it. So step in it was a move to earn NFT game where you would get NFT sneakers on the mobile app and you would then get rewards for your movement. So I'll quickly show you the chart for it anyway. So I'd also came across this article on it which is written by a guy who's kind of funny to be fair but to kind of understand exactly what was going on. So project roadmap, pretty much one would improve the product before expanding the business. Instead of doing that, development team chose to clone the game in different blockchains. The development team tried to save GST from inflation by increasing repair costs for sneakers after you run so that you're actually losing money rather than making it. The final words on it were, step in as a move to earn app that promises you to earn money by running, walking or jogging, but that will only happen in your dreams. So I think the whole kind of issue with the project as a whole had been that there was pretty much no rewards being given to the users who were investing all of this money into the game. But if you happen to have any more information on GMT or the Stepin project, I, and you do think it could be a good one, let me know in the comments below because I'd actually really love to hear more positive side to it as to me, it seemed like a great idea behind it. And I know that from when I used an app that was similar. I mean, it wasn't linked to cryptocurrency. I think I was like 15, 16 at the time with the sweat coins. Yeah, I remember it really motivated me to do it. And I remember you could get good rewards, but I think you had to work kind of hard and I was a little bit lazy at it. So I don't know, I was a bit disappointed to find out that it wasn't this great project that I first read it to be. But yeah, let me know in the comments below and I will see you the next time. Bye.